Do you believe that you can bounce back even when your back is against the wall? Do you believe that you can rise from the ruins? Believe you can. Believe you can. Believe. I always like to start off with a little spoken word poetry to infuse the place. So first I want you to raise your hand if you think you know somebody who's diagnosed with high blood pressure, heart disease, asthma, or any sort of physical illness. Raise your hands high. Okay, you can put your hands down. Hope you now I want you to raise your hands if you think you know somebody who is diagnosed with a mental illness. Raise your hands. Okay, you can put your hands down. So I speak across the country. And when I ask this question, I get different responses. What do you think the responses are? Why do you think they're different? What do you think the responses are? Right? For the first one, people shoot, shoot their hands straight up. Yeah, of course I know somebody who has heart disease or physical illness, right? When I ask the second question, people's hands raise up very hesitantly. And it's like, why didn't you raise your hand straight up? One is a physical illness, the other is a mental illness. I believe that they did not raise their hands straight up because stigma. That hesitation is stigma in action. And because of stigma, we well know right here in this room, people are losing their lives, people are losing jobs, people are losing housing. This must change. This morning, I want to say first, very, for, to start off, is that I am truly grateful. I stand on the shoulders of people that have loved me, cared for me, and supported me even when I did not realize it that I needed it. People like my parents, my friends who took me to the emergency room at college even when I did not know I needed to go, and my NAMI affiliate, NAMI Queens Nassau and NAMI New York State. I believe that the In Our Own Voice program provides people the platform, the, their deepest pain to be their platform for their highest purposes. I'm so grateful for that. That's why I stand here today. Thank you. I also want you to ask you one more question. Raise your hand if you believe that it is time to talk, that it's time to embrace the future. Raise your hand. My promise to you today is that we are going to leave here transformed. We're going to leave here knowing that, one, it is okay to talk about what you're going through. Two, there is absolutely no shame in seeking help. And three, if you are diagnosed with a mental illness, there is hope. This morning, we are going to be united under the banner of acceptance. And under that banner, those three things are more than possible. Nothing is impossible when we accept. So. We are a social media generation, and I have a charge for us. And clearly, we're, I'm a technological generation, but if we can, if we can um, mo motivate to the next slide, please. Let's move to the next slide. We are a social media generation. And what I want us to do here, we tweet and Facebook things. We tweet, hey, uh, he has a selfie and he looks great. But what I want us to do is share something that is going to empower others and move others beyond what we believe. What I would like you to do, first pull out your phones. What I would like you to do is if throughout this conference you see something, hear something, or feel something that makes you feel accepted, I want you to pull out your phone and say hashtag I'm acceptance. Hashtag NamiCon15. And if you feel like it, you can tag me as well. Because beyond here, beyond these walls, we want the movement of acceptance to be far reaching. I know about shame. In 2000, I was actually diagnosed with bipolar disorder. As a sophomore at Harvard University, one night, I heard Jesus 
talking on one corner. His arms are outstretched. He was looking to the sky, looking down to the ground. He had a white beard and a long robe. I heard cars talking that same night. My parents came and picked me up the spring of 2000 from Harvard University, and I was hospitalized that same night. I know about shame. It took me 13 years before I could openly talk about my diagnosis. I do not want that for any of us in here. The stigma around mental illness must change, and it must change now. I did not always think that it was okay to talk. I remember very clearly, it was a January morning. I was sitting at a white desk in my room, and I had my pen in one hand, writing down some names. In my other hand, I had my cell phone, and I was getting ready to actually call my college roommate, who actually called my parents when I was sick, and I had my, my psychosis. I pulled out the phone, and I began dialing his number very slowly. Two, one, my hand, my head was in my hand. He picks up. Hakeem, hey, how you doing? I said, Ian, hi, how are you? I, have, uh, I wanna have a conversation with you. And he said, sure, that sounds weird. You just usually pick up the phone and talk. Well, this is a different type of conversation. You remember back in college, when I was running and jumping off the walls and I was having my psychosis, my manic episode, do you remember that? He said, Hakeem, how could I forget that? You were running and jumping off the walls and you had written, I want to talk about that. During that moment, during the course of that hour, two friends were liberated. We shared laughs, we shared tears, but ultimately, 13 years after our shared experience, the specter of mental illness, the shame and stigma was raised and lifted off of our relationship. The knot that bound our relationship together for 13 years now began to unravel. I want to ask you something. Where in your life are relationships suffering because of the silence? Where in your life are you suffering because of the silence? This morning, we are united under the banner of acceptance, and under that banner, we can say that it is okay. Say it's okay. It's okay. Say it like you mean it. It's okay. I also know about shame. As a NAMI Queens Nassau Let's Talk Mental Illness presenter, I've had the opportunity to speak to over 16,000 students from New York to Colorado, from Pennsylvania to Las Vegas. And I've had the profound chance to look at some young people and say this exact same message. Listen, it's OK to talk about what you're going through. There's no shame in seeking treatment. And if you're diagnosed with a mental illness, there's absolutely hope. In fact, last year, a few blocks from my house, I live in Long Island, Hempstead, Long Island, a few blocks from my house, there was a college called Malloy College. And I remember driving there was a mid-afternoon presentation. And at Malloy College, I was able to present to over 120 faculty, students, and community members. In the audience, third row from the front, there sat this young man and his mother. Throughout the presentation, his mother's face was taut, and tears were streaming down her face. Close towards the end of my presentation, the young man raises his hand. He says, Hakeem, I have what you have. I said, you know, what, what's that? I, I have exactly what you have. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I have bipolar disorder. His mother burst out into a stream of tears. My eyes welled up. His mother said, you know what? This is the first time in over a year since he's been diagnosed that he's actually admitted that he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. He said he was ready to get help. He said he was ready to get treatment. Because the shame of mental illness was lifted, his life may now be transformed. 
I ask you, where in your life do you have to say that, you know what? It is absolutely okay for me to accept help, and there's absolutely no shame. Parents, mothers and fathers, and thank you so much, Theo, for sharing that wonderful story. Where in your lives do you have to say, you know what, my son or daughter may be diagnosed with something, but that's okay. And they come to me and they say they want help, they want treatment, and now I'm not going to say that there is absolutely no shame, there is absolutely no guilt, and I'm going to help them get the treatment that they need. Clinicians, where do you have to say in your practice, do you have to take an extra moment for that person who, like me, just prescribed medication 15 years ago, stood up with his hand shaking, wondering what those pills were going to do to me, wondering what, they were, wondering what was going to happen to me if I swallowed those pills. Clinicians, where do you have to take that extra moment and say, you know what? I understand that you're scared, but there is no shame in receiving help, and there's absolutely hope if you're diagnosed with a mental illness. Saying that there is no shame creates a space for vulnerability and for action. It's okay makes it okay to talk, and that is the beginning of a conversation for vulnerability. But it's not easy. I still experience depression. And I know sometimes when you're in depression in that deep abyss, it feels like, feels like raising bricks off your back to even get out of bed. It feels like the depths of your humanity are buried in a coffin of your existence. However, I want to leave you with this message, that where you are is absolutely not who you are. Where you are is absolutely not who you are. The weight of depression may be laying on your back now, but tomorrow you are going to be the architect of your own comeback. I remember very clearly in 2009, I was laying on my brown suede couch, my arm now draped over the edge. I just started titrating off of several medications that my, my first psychiatrist had just put me on. My second psychiatrist said, you know, Hakeem, I, I want to take you down from these medications and put you on just one. Over the next week and a half, I felt great. Came down off the medication step by step by step. Right away, I was hit with depression after that next few days. And as I laid on my couch, feeling as an absolute failure, nine years had passed, now I had started a job, now I felt like I was, I, I was in a good place, now I felt that I had grasped my well-being and wellness, now I was back to the lowest point that I ever experienced. I felt like I was there 2000, in 2009 years earlier. Felt like a failure. Out of the corner of my eye, Sunlight was shining into my room as I was laying on the couch. And on the TV, I heard this crackling voice. It was this, uh, it was this salesman, he was a self-help guru. He, he was on the TV and he was driving around the neighborhood and he had Coke bottle glasses and he was a slender guy and the camera was in his face. He was like, and you too can be a millionaire. You can do it just like I did. I was like, wow. I peeled myself up off the couch and I lumbered to the house phone. I picked up the house phone and again started dialing the numbers. I got the person on the other line. He said, congratulations, you're going to get the package and you're going to be a millionaire just like... I put the phone down. I'll let you know that I never, ever, ever used that book. And they, I think till this day they still have my number and they were still calling me. But what I did get from that moment is that that same Hakeem Rahim, who wanted to be the valedictorian of, of his high school class, the same Hakeem Rahim, who was getting better just a day earlier, just a few weeks earlier, the same Hakeem who was there for his well-being and his success, he was still in there. He was still ready to raise himself up off the couch, pick up a phone, not knowing what it was, but he heard something in there, and that same Hakeem was in there. In that moment, I realized where I was was not who I was. 
Who I am is more than where I am, and I am absolutely not my label. I may have a diagnosis, but I am not bipolar disorder. And as I come to a close, I ask, do you really realize, can we fathom that our deepest challenges can absolutely be the building blocks of our resilience? And as I said before, we are the architects of our comebacks. If we sometimes can just shift our perspective, imagine how our lives can shift too. We may, we may come from different places to this NAMI Khan 15. I'm so happy to see people from all across the country. We may have different challenges. Some, some of us may have a mental illness, others may not. But this morning, we are absolutely united under that banner of acceptance. If you take away nothing else, take away this. Acceptance is an intentional act. It is far from passive. If we can intentionally say, I accept what I'm going through, if we can say that because I've accepted what I'm going through, there's absolutely no shame and there's absolutely no more hiding. And if we can understand that acceptance builds a space for possibility, and if we understand that if we're diagnosed with a mental illness, there is hope we have won and we have been transformed. You must believe that you can bounce back. You must believe that you can smile. You must believe that you can laugh. You must believe that you can sing. You must believe that somebody out there believes in you even when you do not believe in yourself. Turn to the person sitting next to you. Tell that person, tell that person, I believe in you. Thank you very much.